Here are the iconic stars we said goodbye to for the last time in 2021. Even for celebrities who are up there in age, it's always too soon. We'll miss all of these bold-faced names, but their respective legacies are sure to live on forever. Born Victoria Lee Bloom in the Bronx, Roberts began her career as a successful model after running away from home at 15. She transitioned into acting with roles in the final season of Charlie's Angels and Bond girl Stacey Sutton in A View to a Kill alongside Roger Moore. Roberts went on to star in a series of B-movies, including Sheena and The Beastmaster, but is likely most known for her role as Midge, Donna's mother, on that 70s show starting in 1998. Roberts' death was initially reported incorrectly, as her representative released a statement announcing her death prematurely. Roberts collapsed on Christmas Eve and never fully recovered, reportedly succumbing to sepsis following a urinary tract infection. Actor John Riley died on January 9, 2021, at 86 years old. A Chicago native, Riley began his acting career in the 1960s, with guest starring roles on various series, including a six episode stint as Roy Ralston on Dallas. This marked his first official foray into the soap opera genre that would come to define his long career. Following Dallas, Riley starred in multiple series, eventually getting the role that would make him a household name his decade-long stint on General Hospital as Sean Donnelly. His daughter Caitlin Riley wrote of her father's passing on Instagram, John Henry Matthew Riley, a.k.a. Jack. The brightest light in the world has gone out. Imagine the best person in the world. Now imagine that person being your dad. I'm so grateful he was mine. I'm so grateful I got to love him. I'm so grateful I made it in time to hold him and say goodbye. Siegfried Fischbacher, the last living half of Siegfried and Roy, died on January 13, 2021, following complications with pancreatic cancer, AP reported. He was 81 years old. Fischbacher developed a fascination with magic tricks as a child. He and Roy Horn began working together in 1957 after meeting on a cruise ship, where Horn first served as Siegfried's assistant, then upgraded their performances with animals. Fischbacher and Horn polished their act for several years in their native Germany, as well as in Switzerland, before taking their talents to the United States. They began their Las Vegas performances a decade later. The duo became sensations, not just for their illusions, but also for their work with big cats, including tigers and lions. In 1990, Siegfried and Roy began their residency at the Mirage and extended their contract to a lifetime deal in 2001, with their performances reportedly raking in more than $1 billion. After a tiger injured Horn during a performance, Fischbacher was asked if he'd ever perform alone. His answer to Larry King could not have been more clear, saying, It's not in my makeup, because this is Siegfried and Roy. Roy gave me always the strength, you know. Like I always say, Siegfried would be not enough, and Roy is too much. He pulls me up. He is bigger than life. And that is what it means. Harry Brandt, the influencer son of supermodel Stephanie Seymour and mogul Peter Brandt, died on January 17, 2021, from a drug overdose. He was 24 years old. Harry became a fashion scene fixture since he and his older brother Peter Brandt II were teens and often pushed the envelope with his styling. The duo had their own cosmetics line for MAC, and both modeled for the likes of Balmain and Vogue Italia. Harry also worked as a journalist for his father's interview magazine. At the time of Harry's death, the Brandt family said in a statement to People that he was merely days away from going to rehab, adding, Harry was not just our son, he was also a wonderful brother, loving grandson, favorite uncle, and a caring friend. He was a creative, loving, and powerful soul that brought light into so many people's hearts. He was truly a beautiful person inside and out. He achieved a lot in his 24 years, but we will never get the chance to see how much more Harry could have done. Actress Mira Furlan died at home surrounded by family on January 20th, 2021, at age 65. According to BBC News, Furlan suffered from complications connected to the West Nile virus and had been ill for some time. Furlan starred in Babylon 5, though she is likely best known for her role as scientist Danielle Russo on Lost from 2004 to 2010. Furlan's Twitter account posted a line from her autobiography when she died, which reads, 
I look at the stars. It's a clear night and the Milky Way seems so near. That's where I'll be going soon. Legendary broadcaster Larry King died from COVID-19 complications on January 23, 2021. He was 87 years old. The suspender-clad star was famous for not necessarily asking the hard questions, but for his easygoing nature that allowed his subjects to reveal their true personalities in other ways. As his infamous interview with Jerry Seinfeld showed, King was able to calm Seinfeld down and reroute the increasingly heated conversation when Seinfeld got offended by one of King's questions. Close call, Larry. We'll be right back. Jeez. King's career began in Miami, and he became a big name for CNN in 1985 with Larry King Live. Throughout the years, King interviewed all sorts of celebrities and notable figures, from Vladimir Putin to LeBron James. In 2012, he co-founded the Aura Network and hosted his own online interview series. Since the 1980s, King faced several health struggles, including a heart attack and stroke, but nothing slowed him down. In 2020, King told People, I have less of a fear of dying now. I'm 86 and it is what it is. I just want to keep working until the end. I'd like to die at work. I'll retire right there." Cicely Tyson died on January 28, 2021, at 96 years old. Tyson started as a model before getting her big movie break in 1959 with Odds Against Tomorrow, alongside Harry Belafonte. Following a string of TV gigs, she was later nominated for an Oscar for her work in 1972's Sounder. Tyson wasn't just an acclaimed movie star. Her small screen work was both prolific and critically lauded, including her titular role in the autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman, which won her two Emmys, and her part in 1963's East Side, West Side, which was the first ever recurring part for a black actress on a TV drama. Throughout her six-decade career, Tyson vehemently refused to play the type of character she deemed detrimental to the image of black women. While promoting her memoir, Just As I Am, in her final interview just one day before her death, she told Live with Kelly and Ryan, I never thought that I would be nominated for an Oscar. Never. But I used to view the event every year, and one night I watched it and I said, I'm going to sit in that front row one day. And I ended up doing that for the role of Rebecca in Sounder. Saved by the Bell alum Dustin Diamond, who rose to fame for his portrayal of Samuel Screech Powers, died on February 1, 2021, from stage 4 lung cancer, TMZ reports. He was 44 years old. The former child star's condition was only diagnosed in mid-January, but quickly worsened as he underwent chemotherapy treatments. Diamond had a complicated relationship with his former co-stars after penning the 2009 tell-all book, Behind the Bell, in which he alleged that his castmates engaged in illegal activities on set. Even so, Diamond's Saved by the Bell co-stars were among the celebs who honored him following his death. Lopez noted on Instagram, Dustin, you will be missed, my man. The fragility of this life is something never to be taken for granted. Prayers for your family will continue on. Actor, director, and writer Hal Holbrook died on January 23, 2021, at age 95. Holbrook was most famous for portraying Mark Twain in a series of one-man shows spanning a whopping six decades, winning a Tony Award for his role in Mark Twain Tonight in 1966. Holbrook turned to drama in boarding and military schools in his youth and majored in the subject at Denison University. He performed in productions while serving in World War II, and upon returning home, was cast in the soap opera The Brighter Day. By the mid-1950s, Holbrook performed as Twain on The Ed Sullivan Show and made his Broadway debut in 1961 with Do You Know the Milky Way? He was a stage and screen fixture, especially in television, winning an Emmy for miniseries Lincoln and playing Deep Throat in All the President's Men in 1976. In 2008, Holbrook, then 82, became the oldest actor ever to be nominated for an Academy Award for his role in Into the Wild. Holbrook said that playing Twain was therapeutic, telling SFGate, Mark Twain's opinions let me express my reactions to the way we behave, the ways we think and don't think, and the crazy mistakes we keep making. Alaskan Bush People patriarch Billy Brown died on February 7, 2021, following a seizure. He was 68 years old. 
Billy's son, Bear Brown, confirmed the news on his private Instagram account, writing, He was our best friend, a wonderful and loving dad, granddad, and husband, and he will be dearly missed. He lived his life on his terms, off the grid and off the land, and taught us to live like that as well. Billy, a Texas native, was a commercial fisherman and hunter. After losing his parents and sister in a plane crash when he was 16 years old, he eventually met wife Amy and moved with her from Texas to Alaska. It's here that they would go on to raise their seven children and become reality TV staples. Discovery said in a statement to People, We are devastated to hear of Billy Brown's sudden passing. He has been part of the Discovery family for years. A trailblazer, a lovely man, and most definitely one of a kind. Our heart is with his family and those that knew him and loved him as they deal with his devastating loss. Conservative talk radio host Rush Limbaugh died on February 17, 2021, following a lung cancer diagnosis. He was 70 years old. Born in 1951 to a family of Republicans, Limbaugh took advantage of Ronald Reagan's shelving of the Fairness Doctrine to launch his right-wing radio empire in the 80s in California before moving to the New York market. In 2001, Limbaugh revealed he was nearly deaf and underwent cochlear implants and learned to read lips. Sadly, five years later, he was arrested for prescription fraud for allegedly doctor shopping for painkillers. Then-President Donald Trump awarded Limbaugh, a supporter of charities for fallen military and police families, with the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2020. Actor Yafut Koto died on March 15, 2021, at 81 years old, Variety reported. He worked on stage with Judy Holliday as a mentor, then moved to television, earning an Emmy nomination for his portrayal of Idi Amin in 1977's Raid on Entebbe. Koto's physical size impacted his career. He told the Baltimore Sun, I'm a 200-pound, 6-foot, 3-inch black guy, and I think I have this image of a monster. It's very difficult. His film work placed him alongside heavyweights Robert Redford and Brubaker, Robert De Niro in Midnight Run, Roger Moore in Live and Let Die, Arnold Schwarzenegger in The Running Man, and Sigourney Weaver in Alien. His star turn was Homicide Life on the Street, premiering in 1993. However, Koto rejected major roles because of their portrayal of black characters. He told the Globe and Mail, I was offered a part in Glory, which I refused, because for me, it purported to be about a black experience and was really about the white guy. Do you see me taking orders like that? I couldn't see myself in Driving Miss Daisy either, playing the chauffeur, taking it from some old lady. Some other actor may be able to put that on and make it look real, but I couldn't do it. On March 23, 2021, actor George Segal died at 87 years old from complications during bypass surgery. Segal's most recent role was as Albert Pop Solomon in the sitcom The Goldbergs, but his career spans six decades. In addition to starring in a few old TV adaptations, his film career was stellar. The actor starred in Where's Papa?, Bye Bye Braverman, Fun with Dick and Jane, and The Owl and the Pussycat. Even more, he was nominated for an Oscar for Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. He also had small but memorable roles in projects like The Cable Guy and Entourage. He once told the New York Times of his ubiquity, saying, I'm like a cork in the water, aren't I? I keep bobbing up in all sorts of places, although I never know in advance where or when. Comedy icon Jessica Walter died on March 24, 2021. She was 80 years old. While her career was nearly six decades long, she was most famous for her roles as Lucille Bluth on Arrested Development and Mallory Archer in Archer. In 2012, she told the AV Club that playing twisted trouble characters was her favorite forte. She shared, Lucky me, because those are the fun roles. They're juicy, much better than playing the vanilla ingenues, you know, Miss Vanilla Ice Cream. Archer creator Adam Reed said in a statement to Deadline, the Archer family is heartbroken to lose Jessica Walter, our beloved colleague and friend. Jessica was a consummate professional, an actor's actor, and the exact opposite of Mallory Archer. Warm, caring, and kind, with an absolutely cracking sense of humor. And it was both a privilege and a true honor to work with her over these many years. She will be greatly missed, but never forgotten. Beloved children's author Beverly Cleary died on March 25, 2021. She was 104 years old. 
As a young girl, Cleary struggled with reading and was in her grade's lowest ability reading group, her website notes, which led her to sympathize with struggling readers and eventually to write books that readers of multiple age levels would be able to embrace. Cleary penned a total of 39 books, including two memoirs, throughout her long, illustrious life, winning the 1984 John Newbery Medal for Dear Mr. Henshaw and Newbery Honors for Ramona and Her Father and Ramona Quimby, age 8. Musician Kevin Clark, who starred in School of Rock as a child, died on May 26, 2021, at age 32, the Chicago Sun-Times reported. Clark was riding his bicycle when he was struck by a vehicle and died at a nearby hospital. Clark, who played drums in the film, had no plans on being an actor, his mother told the outlet, but loved music and also played violin, piano, and guitar. After School of Rock, Clark taught music at a local School of Rock location and was in several bands. Upon Clark's death, Black posted photos with the drummer from their 2003 film together, as well as hanging out in 2018 on Instagram. Black wrote, Devastating news. Kevin is gone. Way too soon. Beautiful soul. So many great memories. Heartbroken. Sending love to his family and the whole School of Rock community. Olympia Dukakis died at 89 on May 1, 2021. Her brother Apollo announced on Facebook following many months of failing health. Olympia had bit parts in film and on television before her breakout role as Rose Castorini in Moonstruck in 1987, which won her a Best Supporting Actress Oscar. Olympia followed with blockbusters Working Girl, Look Who's Talking, and Steel Magnolias. In 1993, she starred in Tales of the City, a role she reprised in Further Tales of the City in 2001 and the miniseries 2019 reboot. She frequently played characters much older than her actual age, starring as then 32-year-old Dustin Hoffman's mother in John and Mary in 1969 when she was just 38. Olympia told the New York Times of her career, I always played older. I think it was the voice. Cher tweeted in tribute to her longtime friend, Olympia played my mom in Moonstruck, and even though her part was that of a suffering wife, we laughed all the time. She would tell me how much she loved Louis, her handsome, talented husband. I talked to her three weeks ago. R.I.P., dear one. Actor Paul Ritter died at home surrounded by his wife, Polly, and sons Noah and Frank on April 5, 2021. Ritter was 54 years old and had been diagnosed with a brain tumor, his representatives confirmed to People. Ritter's rep shared in a statement to the outlet, Paul was an exceptionally talented actor playing an enormous variety of roles on stage and screen with extraordinary skill. He was fiercely intelligent, kind, and very funny. We will miss him greatly. Ritter was a fixture in blockbusters, appearing in films like Quantum of Solace, Friday Night Dinner, The Game, and TV miniseries Chernobyl. Ritter is also an accomplished stage actor, being nominated for an Olivier Award twice and a Tony Award in 2009 for his stage performances. According to The Guardian, Ritter will appear posthumously in a 10-year anniversary special for Friday Night Dinner, so we can look forward to seeing Ritter one more time. Absolutely terrific! Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, died on April 9, 2021, at 99 years old in Windsor Castle. Buckingham Palace announced, with the Queen expressing her, quote, deep sorrow over the news. The Duke had previously been hospitalized for nearly a month for a heart condition and went home in March, the BBC reported. Before becoming a fixture of the British royals, Philip served in the Navy in World War II and was an accomplished carriage driver, helping to actually create and popularize the sport. His youngest son, Prince Edward, previously said of Philip, My father, plain and simply, is very modest about himself and doesn't believe in talking about himself. One of his best pieces of advice he gives to everybody is talk about everything else. Don't talk about yourself. Nobody's interested in you. Ever cheeky and outspoken, Philip himself echoed that in an interview with BBC. When asked if he felt he was successful in his royal role, he scoffed, I couldn't care less. Who cares what I think about it? I mean, it's ridiculous. Actor Helen McCrory died on April 16, 2021. She was 52 years old. Her husband, actor Damian Lewis, tweeted about her death, writing, I'm heartbroken to announce that after a heroic battle with cancer, 
The beautiful and mighty woman that is Helen McCrory has died peacefully at home, surrounded by a wave of love from friends and family. She died as she lived, fearlessly. God, we love her and know how lucky we are to have had her in our lives. She blazed so brightly. Go now, little one, into the air, and thank you. McCrory told Idler in 2019 that her East African upbringing caused her to enjoy the, quote, minutia of life. And on the subject of her own personal happiness, she once told stylist, I don't know that I've always been confident and self-assured, but I've never been all that self-conscious. I find what's going on around me far more interesting than my own navel. Best known for playing Polly Gray in Peaky Blinders, the versatile star also portrayed Draco Malfoy's mother in the Harry Potter franchise. Her other big screen credits include Skyfall, The Queen, and Hugo. McCrory's diverse roles will surely be remembered. You mean to a woman like me? Yes. Paul Mooney died on May 19, 2021, after suffering a heart attack, TMZ reported. He was 79. Mooney's first foray into show business was as a ringmaster in a circus. He moved on to comedy, famously penning material for Richard Pryor. He later wrote for Sanford and Son, in living color, and perhaps most famously, Chappelle's show, on which he also appeared in recurring sketches. Mooney was particularly proud of reclaiming the N-word in his and Pryor's work, explaining in his memoir, Black is the New White. When Richard and I use it on stage in front of an audience with both white and black folks in it, we're saying something that white people can't. It's forbidden to them, but allowed to us. Ain't too many things like that. It's liberating. Dave Chappelle paid tribute to Mooney in a brief interview with TMZ. He shared, I want to shout out every comedian on earth. One of the best that ever did it, his legacy will live forever. He added that Mooney was one of the very first black writers to join the Writers Guild, saying, Paul Mooney will be sorely missed and wildly remembered. I'll see to that. Perhaps most famous for portraying the recurring character of Billy Merchant on NBC's The Office, actor Mark York died on May 19, 2021, at Ohio's Miami Valley Hospital, Variety reported. York's cause of death is reportedly an unspecified but sudden illness. He was 55 years old. York had few appearances before getting his gig as the Scranton Office Park property manager in the early seasons of The Office. He first appeared in the season two episode called The Injury, in which he speaks at a disability awareness meeting for Dunder Mifflin. Following his success on popular comedy series, York became an inventor and received at least two patents before his death. According to his obituary per Variety, York always tried to look at what he could accomplish and do, not what he couldn't do. He had experienced many travel opportunities and many dreams for the future. Even more, he was also known for his outgoing, uplifting, positive attitude and personality. Samuel E. Wright, most famous for voicing Sebastian the Crab in Disney's animated The Little Mermaid, died on May 24, 2021, following a three-year battle with prostate cancer. The Hollywood Reporter confirmed he was 74 years old. Wright started out on Broadway and then starred in the sitcom Ball Four in 1976, then became a cop in the 1980 Dukes of Hazzard spin-off series, Enos. In 1984, he got his first Tony Award nomination for The Tap Dance Kid. His second came in 1998 for his portrayal of Mufasa in Disney's Broadway production of The Lion King. He also starred in the film Bird, directed by Clint Eastwood as jazz icon Dizzy Gillespie. Wright's turn as the grumpy composer Crab was his most illustrious, and his vocals contributed to the Best Original Song Oscar win for Under the Sea. His lead on Kiss the Girl was nominated in the same category. He reprised the role of Sebastian and recorded voiceovers and songs for prequels, sequels, and other appearances under the Disney umbrella. He told the Los Angeles Times in 1991, I approach all of my roles with the same fervor. Maybe not every actor would say this, but if I didn't want to be immortal, I wouldn't be acting. I do want to make my little mark on the world. Sadly, these aren't the only celebs who have left us in 2021 so far. Here are some of the other stars who enhanced many lives and left their mark on the world before leaving us all too soon. B.J. Thomas Joe Lara and Gwen Shamblin Clarence Williams III 
Gavin McLeod, Charles Grodin, Tawny Katane, DMX, Craig Moms Grant, Larry Flint, Mary Wilson, Marion Ramsey, Tommy Lasorda, Phil Spector, Cloris Leachman, Sophie, Christopher Plummer. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Nikki Swift videos about your favorite celebs are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.